Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to get you started and teach you how to fly your craft in the most time efficient way possible. If you already have the basics down, make sure to check my playlist, link below in the description box. The playlist is a collection of guides that I have been working on for the past year, sharing the PvP community's knowledge with you to help fellow players become more competitive in the verse. While you can practice this in the public universe, I recommend taking this into Arena Commander. This will be the fastest way to practice maneuvering around without having to worry about crashing your ship or having to restart. Let's start with key bindings. I have a video dedicated to controls linked at the top right. But in short, for most of you mouse and keyboard players, here's what I use. I like to have my strafes on my WSAD as I find strafes to be the most important function in movement in Star Citizen. So let's cover the basic movements. You have your strafe forward, strafe back, strafe up, strafe down, roll, yaw, and pitch. Now that we have all the basics covered, let's get into movement. So here we are on Arena Commander Free Flight. The first thing we're going to be covering is your speed. I've already covered key binding, so I expect you to know what input causes what action. That said, I will be calling out the actions to make this easier to follow. The speed limiter in Star Citizen is indicated on the HUD on the left hand side. When you see the box with dashes, it means it is disabled. When you see a solid box, it means it is enabled. Generally in combat, you want the speed limiter off at all times, as putting the limiter on not only slows down the top speed of your ship, but slows down the maximum output of your engines. When you are practicing and trying to learn a new skill, you want to turn on your speed limiter and lower it. Work your way up slowly. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Let's talk about coupled and decoupled. You can see what mode you're in by looking at the bottom left hand side of the HUD. When in coupled mode, your ship stops your ship when you let go of any inputs, meaning if I were to right strafe and I were to let go, my ship will automatically slow itself down. In decoupled mode, we no longer have that assist. If we right strafe and we let go of right strafe, we will continue traveling in that direction. This is beneficial because it allows you to use the maximum output of all your thrusters whenever you want to use them. I highly recommend learning how to both fly coupled and decoupled as they are both important tools to understand. Now let's get down to movement. We're going to apply a little bit of forward strafe here. That will increase my traversal speed displayed on the HUD on the left hand side. The most important thing in Star Citizen is knowing how to brake. To brake, all you have to do is hold your space brake. This is the easiest way to brake but eventually you will work at stopping the ship on your own without the assistance of space break. Now that we know how to stop and move, how do we understand what direction we're traveling? Well, the easiest way to do this is by understanding the vector. The vector is an item that appears on your HUD as you move in a certain direction. It is illustrated by two chevrons. When they are pointing towards each other, it indicates we are going in this direction, and when they point away from each other, it means we're pointing in the reverse direction. By default, the TVI likes to disappear in Star Citizen, so we're going to change that. We're going to go to Options, Game Settings, and then we're going to scroll down till we find the TVI indicator, and we're going to change this to Always On. Another tool that we have is the TVI Radar. As soon as I start accelerating forward, and my TVI is directly in front of me, we'll see a symbol on the bottom left hand side of the HUD. This is represented by a compass, with the red dot in the center indicating your ship, and a white dot to indicate the TVI. If we start to look away from the TVI, you'll start to see that it lines up with the ship's direction. The red line on the border of your compass indicates the horizontal direction of travel, the white dot indicates your vertical direction of travel, and your speed, depending on its position between the center dot and the outside wall. If I start to accelerate forward and start pushing the TVI back to the front of my ship, you'll start to see the TVI swing around to the front and also align itself on the compass, now showing it in front of me. This is very helpful when you're moving around and you're uncertain as to where the TBI is. This displays it right below me and to the rear. This displays it directly to my left hand side and down to the bottom. As you'll notice when you mess around with the TBI, your strafe directions can have an input on the TBI's direction. Currently, the TBI is directly in front of me and if I strafe to the left, it'll move to the left. If I strafe to the right, it will move to the right. This is helpful because this can help you set trajectory courses between obstacles. As we approach this station, you can see me maneuver my TVI around and place it in between certain directions. For example, if I wanted to go between these refinery pods, all I would have to do is line the TVI up, 
and I'll slide right in between it as long as I keep it in the general direction, keeping me safe as I travel through it. So how do we stop our ship without the use of space brake? Well, it's as simple as retrograde and prograde. Prograde is when you are pushing in the direction of the TVI's direction, and retrograde is when you are pushing against it. For example, we're currently headed into the TVI, meaning we are in prograde. To go retrograde, all we have to do is flip our ship around and line ourselves up with the opposite end of the TVI. Once here, all we have to do is move forward, and as you'll see, our speed will slow down as we're burning in the direction of our TVI, also known as retrograde. All these tools I'm giving you are to help you understand what you're doing in the game. With time, you will need them less and less. I have been flying for several years now and have gotten to a point where I can understand in what direction I'm moving at any given time. With time and practice, you will eventually develop a sense of 3D space, allowing you to traverse more easily and efficiently without the use of such tools. But it will take time. You don't necessarily have to grind to get better, Gradually, using these tools and understanding your actions, you will get better at the game. Thank you as always to all my supporters, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.